Hey there, everybody. My name is Troy Nelson. This is live on KEXP from listener-powered independent 90.3 FM and broadcasting live in Seattle and streaming 24-7 at kexp.org and our free mobile apps. And these live performances are made possible by people like you. So thank you for supporting KEXP. And uh, I'm a very lucky DJ today because I grew up listening to this band, skateboarding to this band, and it is, I feel like I manifested this 30 years later, but we are more than excited to have the legendary Quicksand in the KEXP studios. And if you're all ready, take it away. Just 
Awesome. You are listening to Quicksand here in the KEXP live room.
Fantastic. <laughs> uh, you've been listening to Quicksand live here in the KEXP live room. And uh, once again, my name's Troy, your host today. And in my 18 years of radio, uh, it's very rare that I get to come in and host a session with one of my childhood favorite bands. So this is extra special for me. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Troy. And I have hard evidence of this, by the way. Uh-huh, prove it. Okay, I have got some uh, things to show you. Well, Walter, this is not the first time you and I have been in the same room together. Okay. And about 20 years ago, I uh, came to see you play with uh, the band Rival Schools. Mm. And I handed you my quicksand slip CD. And uh, you, I had told you that I listened to this incessantly when my parents... Uh, would drive from our uh, small town in South Dakota to Nebraska to my grandma's house. And it's a very boring drive uh -huh. because the Midwest is just flat, flat and boring, yeah. mostly. And I listened to Slip over and over. And it just uh, I don't, uplifted me in, in such a way that other bands just didn't seem to do. It just resonated with me. And I was telling you the story. So you autographed this for me and had one of the guys on the album. It says, Nebraska Ho! And because uh, I told you this story and then you commented that you didn't realize that there was more green in the album cover. And then when I handed you the rival schools that you also autographed for uh -huh. me, you uh, had one of these people saying green because uh -huh. you're mentioning that uh, green seems to be a theme in your life. And then I handed you this and you signed this. And you said, what the hell is up with Walt and Green? Yeah. And this was also autographed by you. And check out the sweater you are wearing and today. I'm wearing green. Oh, my God. It's beyond. We're on the next cycle now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So yeah. I want to uh, talk about a little bit of history. Uh, obviously, you've been in a few bands, uh -huh. to say the least. And uh, for me, uh, somewhere, I, I, I don't know if I have this chronologically perfect, but I've had this from my own record collection. But obviously, in your early days, it started somewhere mm -hmm. with uh, Gorilla Biscuits mm -hmm. and also, you know, Youth of Today. Oh, yeah. And these were the, the beginnings. Were these your first bands that you were in that actually recorded? recorded something and put it out on record? Yeah, um, it was kind of happening at the same time. So the, the Gorilla Biscuits thing was the first thing that I put together, and then Youth Today was kind of already happening, and I joined in on that. And I think that's where I probably got to first, like, be recording for a record. It was pretty exciting. Yeah. And uh, to mention also, you uh, played with Warzone. You did some shows and recorded with them on the uh, New York City hardcore compilation called Together. Yes. Uh, Outburst. Mm -hmm. Judge. Yes. Moondog. Uh-huh. Uh, walking Concert. That's right. And also played drums in Pearl Harbor. Yes, I it, did. Okay. Wow, you have really scoured the internet here. I love that. <laughs> uh, Dead Heavens. Uh-huh. Uh, Vanishing Life. Yes. And uh, Rival Schools and, of course, Quicksand. Uh -huh. And I'm very curious, once again, going back to the beginnings, can you tell us all about a song that you heard when you were a kid that uh, had an effect on you, a song called High Hopes mm. about a little ant? Mm, yeah, I think that was like kind of in kindergarten kind of uh, time where uh, the song goes... Uh, well, it's like about an ant and a rubber tree plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the, the, the things aren't going well for this ant. The rubber tree plant seems too big for him to carry. And he just carries it. He just says, I got, I can do this. And the chorus goes, um, I've got high hopes. I've got high, high apple pie in the sky. I hope so every time. I could do the whole damn song. <laughs> Uh, anyone probably like my age would know that song. I don't know if they, if they cut that one off, but um, mm-hmm. it's like the kind of sweet little song that kind of sticks in your head. And whenever you're, you know, kind of like little train that could kind of story to help little kids get through and push through things. Right. Right. Love that. And uh, I'm curious, uh, now I'm snapping to a l- little bit later, getting into adulthood. How significant was it for you when you uh, very first discovered My Bloody Valentine? Really awesome. I mean, we were at Quicksand. We were on tour, our first tour, because um, the uh, the Gulf War was happening and the airfare got really cheap. So we w- went over to England and toured there in, in a, this little weird van. And um, in uh, the UK, th- I think Man- Manchester was happening and all this kind of like... Uh, you know, kind of acid housey kind of stuff. And, uh, but on, coming underneath the next trend over there was uh, My Bloody Valentine. And they had just put out the Glider single, I think. And um, we had the Isn't Anything album just on repeat and just like wore it down in yeah. the trip. So, I mean, I think, you know, obviously My Bloody Valentine are no longer an obscure reference. Mm-hmm. But at that time, it was just kind of peeking out. And for us, we were, you know, pretty open music listeners and um there's something about it that struck me there's a certain like beautiful core to it but there's a uh you know this sort of like haze around it and Mm -hmm. um i think a lot of hardcore music's like that too there's just like Mm -hmm. kind of noise in front of it but in the behind it is is a song and i think that's what kind of we all could just kind of flipped on it awesome yeah, same here. When I first discovered them, I was like, "What? Who's? Are these humans making this music?" Yeah, it sounds like it's almost from like another dimension. It's or a something. very, very you know, forward thinking. Still sounds futuristic. It, absolutely. And throughout all these years, you've had the pleasure of playing with a lot of great drummers. Mm. And one time, somebody asked you who your favorite hardcore drummer uh-huh. is, and you said that there was a few. You said Armand from Sick of It All. Yeah. And also Mackie. Yeah, I mean, Mackie, you got to always, any of these kind of like hardcore questions, Mackie from, uh, he played in Bad Brains and Chromax is, is always going to mm-hmm. pop up. And then you said Luke and Sam. Yes, awesome drummers. Yeah. I guess I started just naming people. At first, it was like the ones that I thought of, and then I was like, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble if I don't say. <laughs> but well, I, I, <laughs> there's so many good drummers. I mean, Sam's amazing. Uh, I mean, Alan is, is an amazing, I don't think of Alan so much as a hardcore drummer, but he could, plays it really well, mm-hmm. actually. Um, but yeah, some of these guys are super iconic and they really just get the energy of it and innovate in it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love those guys. And well, it got me to thinking like, who are some of my favorite, like, especially like not growing up in the nineties and like, uh, in sort of in the hardcore scene, my Mm -hmm. favorite drummers. I I don't know if you've ever gotten to play with him, but, uh, the, the first person that comes to my mind is, uh, John Stanier from Helmet. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I I don't know John from like hardcore music, Mm -hmm. um, but he was I mean, he is into hardcore, um, but, you know, he just comes with that energy yeah. and uh, he has such a uh, unique way of playing. Like, I, you, you could just pull him out of a lineup no matter what he's playing. Yeah, for some reason, just from my perspective, small town kid growing mm-hmm. up in South Dakota, I just, I, when I think of the 90s, I think of quicksand. I always put Helmet there, but the, did you tour with them or was we there did. some crossover? Uh, yeah, I mean, they were kind of, they were... Um, I think of it as like the older brother band when we were coming up because they, yeah, they were older and just kind of had connections to like kind of no way of seeing in New York, which was a little bit, uh, you know, just we were a little bit young for, for it. Mm-hmm. And they um, they brought us along for the ride and uh, just such an awesome band. And we, you know, love them. And, uh, and John definitely was a big part of that and, mm-hmm. and Paige. I mean, they're, they're just great. Awesome. And I'm curious uh, what it is like to work with Will Yip. Yeah, Will's amazing. Will is like, um, he's just a force, you know? He never sits down, so he's always standing, so you always have a feeling of like we're doing something. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a great musician all around and uh, y- y- kind of like absorbs into the band as an additional member that's like, your favorite new guy. He's great. 
Awesome. Well, once again, I want to thank you for the decades of fantastic music and uh, appreciate you all taking the time to be here with us at KEXP and for all of the uh, tougher times in my childhood that quicksand got me through and listening to Slip and Manic Compression and then to see e even the records today that you're putting out are fantastic and it all still really sounds like quicksand. You just have a chemi chemistry between you. Thank you so much. That's great. Yeah, we're happy to be here. I'm so psyched to be uh, to be playing here. It's a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you. and celebrating 30 year anniversary yes. of Slip as well. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're having so much. We have just like I think a few more shows, but we've been having so much fun playing this record and playing it in sequence, um, and uh, and just all the fans coming out. It's just it's been very special for us. So this is this is a part of that amazing trip for us. So thank you. Awesome. Once again, you have been listening to Quicksand here, 90.3 KEXP, Seattle. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Discover new music at listener-powered KEXP.org.